in third place is the team from United States. So Enactus is a group of volunteers, and that word is going to be really critical, who are taking entrepreneurial action to help benefit others. It's giving students the resources, the opportunities, the support to take an idea from concept and put it into action and to um, do that with the purpose of helping people. It helps people in different parts of the world. Um, with their economic, social, and environmental issues. Uh, in the JBU context, it is a club slash class. So we get together every Tuesday and have a formal class setting like any other college class. But then on top of that, we take real life problems that we see in the world. So, and then we take entrepreneurial methods to solve those problems. Students get involved in ACTUS at a project level. So literally the nitty gritty of uh, you have a project that begins here, that has an ending date, that has multiple tasks involved with it. So what we do is we see the opportunity and then we go and evaluate if this is a, a project that we're going to work on, um, like what, what the tools that we need, the resources, the people that we need to contact. And look at how can we solve this in a way that after we're completely left, our impact continues on for 10, 15, or 20 years. Um, and that can be a variety of ways, whether that be through education. Usually there's a business aspect because you need to pay people and fix things eventually. So that's why it tends to be heavily skewed towards business, but it's not all about business. So we're presenting on two projects. One of them is the Guatemala Water Project. And this was, um, this is a project that we've been working on for years now. And we build water purification companies in rural Guatemala especially in remote, like, mountainous areas where either they don't have access to clean water or in some cases, like San Bartolo, is that their, even their municipal system was only on for like one hour a day. The other project that we're presenting is Shredify, which is here in Salom. Um, we partner with the ADC, which is the Adult Development Center. Which is a secure document destruction business uh, here in Siloam Springs. It's run by individuals with disabilities. Um, so it's giving meaningful work to people who are oftentimes marginalized by, her, by society. The John Brown University Enactus team has been working locally and globally, but that is, that is happening uh, around the world in these uh, Enactus teams from uh, almost 40 countries. So at some point during the year we get together and we have a competition. So the presentation team what we do is just summarize what we've been working on for the whole year and years past. And we just want to share our story and make people excited about it. And because we are excited about, about it, about what we do. A lot of people think uh, that we're kind of the, f the face of our Enactus Club. And to a certain degree that might be true, but all we are doing is representing the work of countless individuals in the JBU Enactus. In no way do we represent the entire Enactus Club. We're just there to go promote what the hard work of the individuals in Enactus have done. Um, it's, it's a little bit disappointing to me that more people can't be involved with competition just because of the fact that we have you know, almost 70 students in our club and only six people about get to represent all that hard work that they have done. Um, it's, it's, an, it's truly a team effort. Our competition team is, they're just a ball of laughter. They are so fun. Um, we get into that competition room or the practice room and it's always just, there's always some, you know, I gotta redo this. How can I do this? They're so fun, I love them. It makes me so happy to even think about them. Our competition team is made up of six students. So we have four main speakers and then we have two Q&A. Our four speakers are, they're just this, this, they're the rocks of the team. They're the ones that know the ins and out of everything. They've, they know that script in and out. And so we have Luke. Yeah. I think Luke is just so smart and he just likes different, like to know different facts about random things. Like he would just tell you the history of coffee or the history of, I don't know, 
the Middle East. Like, he, he knows a lot. Little factoid, uh, an Actus JBU started presentations. Uh, Luke and I are kind of like the problem twins of the, of the team. <laughs> we just do stuff that doesn't make any sense, and, and everyone else just kind of tolerates us. Cooper's the one who, when we need to get things done, Cooper gets it done. He is a, a rock on our team. Cooper is our uh, supreme leader. Uh, we would follow Cooper in the battle. Uh, Cooper, Cooper could literally get on a horse and say, march that way, and we all would. We just, we love Cooper and we trust him. Ale is our sweetheart of the team. She is just this calming presence. She's, um, she's the person when we know we have a line in the script that we want to just capture people's hearts, we stick Ale on it. Sometimes I feel like I'm the normal person of the day. Really neat girl, very down to earth. She cares about people, but she doesn't smother them. Nate is just really proud of where he is from. He's from Washington State, and he just loves saying that every time he can. Yeah, so I, I'm from Olympia, Washington, so left coast, very proud of that. He's an enacted speaker, he's a financial officer, he's a project leader, he started a coffee shop. Oh, and by the way, he's a varsity cross country runner. But also, like, he knows when to, like, just enjoy people's company. We have a great time together. They're just too funny. Honestly, this year has been my favorite year with the speaker team. We have a, a just a very fun relationship. Each one of them plays off of each other extremely well. And that is a big part of the chemistry and a big part of the success factor of why John Brown did so well at the Nationals. This season clearly was, it's been pretty successful. We started off with regionals in Dallas, Texas, and students rocked it there. Um, we didn't have too much of a doubt going into regionals just because we knew we had strong projects and we had strong presentation team, but you never know. So uh, we went to nationals in Kansas City. Uh, and then at nationals, we weren't really sure where we stood. Uh, previously, the two years leading up to this, we had won third and then second place, so this was our year to win. Uh, we were pretty nervous. Uh, the team that had won the year before was in the Final Four with us again, and so we weren't very confident going into the Final Four. So the way that Nationals works is you start out, there's 457 Enactus teams in the United States, and that gets broken down at the regional competitions, down to 150 at Nationals, so you compete in different leagues on the first day. And so that they break that all the way down to 16 teams. That's the semifinal round. Uh, and so we competed in semifinals, went to the final round. So that was the top four of those 150 projects. Two out of the four that we were competing against were past winners. And so that puts a lot of pressure on you. Yeah. And at the same time, it's also, let's see what we're made of. And our wonderful, wonderful team rose to the occasion. The, when, they, when they announced that we had won, um, I think from, from somebody who's, an out, who's outside of an actus, um, it would be hard to quite understand all that that meant, but it was validation for all of the hard work that everyone had put into an actus. It was validation that our work mattered and what we did mattered, and there was nothing else that we could have asked for. So we advanced and students left for the summer. And so it's kind of an interesting timeline because you know you have this three month gap and then August, end of August, students come back and you are in full swing prepping for London and you're leaving one month after students get here. And so we have been in the practice room a million hours a day and uh, when students aren't in class, they're prepping for the presentation. They say World Cup is, the presentations on World Cup are very different because they're a lot more story-based and they focus on really the emotions behind the impact rather than this, the nitty-gritty numbers. So, and then in Actus USA is the opposite. It's the judges are all focused on what were your impacts, what your, were your finances, how did you do this in this way? And so we're really excited to see how we do in London and that's just about a week away. It hasn't quite hit me yet that I'm flying to London with uh, my team. I'm really looking forward to it quite a bit. I think what I'm most excited about is competing at London because I, I, I don't, I enjoy my team probably the most when we're on stage presenting. 
uh, something that we've worked on so hard for so many months. So, what day is it? What day is it? Saturday. 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 <laughs> um, what's happening tomorrow? We're going to the Saturday. 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 Sunday, we left here, we arrived. I remember being very tired when we when we arrived in London, just exhausted. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, oh my gosh, we're on the other side of the world. When, when you're competing at a national level, sometimes uh, you know there's rivalries, but there's a very different spirit at the World Cup. These are teams that have really never faced each other before. They get there and the very first thing they do is have a cultural celebration. It ends up with people from all over the world dancing together. We, we stood in line to check in between the Chinese and the Russians. And, you know, whereas in some aspects of, of the news, you might see people from these countries presented in a poor light. These were young people walking along, taking selfies, and talking about the impact that they are having in their countries. Uh, young people who want to do good. When it starts out with this cultural celebration and all these people mixing and then even dancing together, it becomes a very different culture there. People were genuinely excited to meet people from other teams. You could just see, like, people were asking about projects, about, I don't know, political things. It just was very diplomatic versus that competition or, like, we're better than you type feel. So that was very refreshing. It was just fun. And then Tuesday, we had the World Culture Experience, which is basically each country, which there's 36 countries, had a 12-foot booth and then some information about their country and then things that they handed out that were native to their country. And each of the speakers would wear native, gar uh, native clothing. Cowboy hats, a, a, uh, a cowboy shirt, and then blue jeans and uh, cowboy boots. That was our ensemble as we went in to go represent the United States. And I remember the, I think, Everyone, when they saw us, were just particularly excited because it fulfilled all their stereotypes. All their stereotypes of exactly what the United States should be. All those spaghetti westerns that they watched growing up. You know, the Russians were just, they were just amazed that these Americans fit exactly like they should. You know, that, like there was this one Russian girl who just could not get enough of the cowboy. It was phenomenal. We had a Statue of Liberty. Um, like a crop out where you could just take pictures. One of my favorite things was to try the different food that was there on the tables for each country. It was just like a big party and people just started like playing like their drums and stuff. At the beginning of last year for Enactus, we saw World Cup competitions and we saw Canada compete. Right as the, as the speech ended, what the club class thought of the presentation, and Umberto Smith was the first one to answer, and he said that he was in love with one of the girls who was on the presentation team. And I was just, oh my gosh, that is a cute girl. She's smart, she's a businesswoman. What else, what else would I want in life? Like, it is accurate that Umberto did find this girl to be very cute as, um, when he was watching the World Cup last year. However, the extent to which he found her cute, or or the amount of time... Objection! No, hey, you're not allowed. You're not allowed to do this. Okay, keep your mouth shut. The amount of times that he mentioned how cute said girl is obnoxious. It was just, there was so... Like, so many practices, like, oh, like anytime we watched their Q&A, because they had, had a really interesting Q&A, Portia was like, oh, oh my gosh, gosh this is gorgeous. The, the... So we get to World Cup, and she was there, of course, because she had been a junior, now she's a senior. And so Nate Wurtis and I went over and talked to her, and Nate had mentioned, like, hey, we have a friend who's, like, obsessed with you and wants to meet you. <laughs> it, would, it would mean the world to me if they could meet. At, at this, can we make that happen? And she's like, yeah, just send them over here, we'll make it happen. And then I see that we're going straight to Canada, and I'm like, Ugh, what is going on? And he went up and tried to talk to him, she's like, oh, you're the person that's like been obsessed with me for a year. Oh, are you the guy that is looking for me? And I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, she says, okay, can we take a picture? And so they took a picture, and she's like, all right, one more, but stay looking at the camera. And then she leaned over and kissed him as they took the picture. So that was, in itself, a great experience. Uh, international collaboration right there. You, you look at something like that, even the cultural celebration where it turned into this big line, the drums are playing and people are out there dancing, you, you kind of think that if young people did more of that, then as they got older and went into business, went into public service, they, they, they would find it very hard to go to war with each other, to, 
to hate each other as adults if they've danced with each other in their youth. Then we uh, went to the ceremony, we got to walk across the stage, uh, represent the United States, and then pick our league. So basically what Enactus does is it tries to make the experience as terrifying as possible. What they do is they line, us, they line the president of each club up on stage and their advisor, and, they, and you have to draw a number out of a hat. And then that number kind of designates when you're going to go and choose your slot for the, comp for the competition. So there was eight leagues, four in the morning, four in the evening, uh, and then like we knew ahead of time from our team manager from the U.S. Enactus organization which teams were strongest and who to stay away from and whatnot. And so we had some strategy on how to choose where we went in a league. What does it mean to pick a league? Oh, let me tell you what I thought it meant and then what Cooper did. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we're up there strategizing. We're going to pick the morning session. We're going to pick probably like the last slot in that session or in that league. And I think that's what we're doing. And then like, we get up there. Our strategy was leagues one through three. That was what we were planning on. Yes. And then later in that league, so we get the last of the last <laughs> thing. No. And then we get up there. They say United States. And Cooper goes. United States, league seven, slot one. I'm like, where did that come no, from? Like, that was actually a really good It was super smart. That was what I totally worked. Uh, we had about 16 teams that we knew we did not want to go into competition with, which was like Germany, um, the British, uh, who else? India, Canada, some of the teams that just historically have done really well. And so none of those teams were in that league. And so that's why I went with League Seven. Uh, but the next day we compete, so that's the first round. We ran through our speech, um, probably for the millionth and, I don't know, millionth time, probably, which is great, which is something we needed to do. Yeah, we made our powwow kind of thing, like, like we, how we always do it, and just encourage each other and try to get our energy levels high. We were just ready for it. We knew how hard we had been working for it the whole year. So it was a lot of confidence, but also we were, we were proud of what we've done. And we were just ready to share that with a lot of people. You had to choose between debilitating sickness and quenching your thirst. Has a disability ever caused people to look at you and wonder, how could you possibly take care of yourself, support a family, or participate in society? And while this may not be your reality, it is for millions of people every day. We are Enactus USA. We are proud to represent the 457 USA Enactus teams that work together to create innovative solutions to these problems and many more. Today. And then, so what we do is we go on stage, we present for 17 minutes. Um, our presentation has 17 minutes to the, to the second. We're not allowed to go over. We will get cut off if we go over. And then there's five minutes of Q&A um, where, where they can ask us any sort of question they want to. And we have to be ready to respond to that question with, uh, with a good response, otherwise, otherwise we're out. I remember walking in, I think you just get a calmness. One, I think Holy Spirit was working in the room just because all four of us were just so confident going in. Uh, and then, I don't know, the adrenaline's pumping, and I think you just kind of forget. Like you were saying, like the words just kind of come to your mind, so it's kind of like an out-of-body thing. Like you're watching yourself do it, but you're not actually like thinking about it because you just have it all muscle memory. It's, it's always very exciting when you walk into a room and you see how many people you get to speak to. Uh, that's always a lot of fun. But I think we were very calm. I think going down, we were very calm, very collected, and just really excited to begin. Yeah. I honestly think that I was the best one we've done. I think we did great at just showing um, the passion that we have for each project. The actual presentation itself was by far the best we'd ever given it. I thought it was probably one of our best presentations. I, th I don't think that I've ever felt more connected with my teammates than I did in that presentation. I just think we really gave it our all. <laughs> when I walked out of that room, I felt like I was going to cry, like I, I had no words, like I was just, okay, now it's just up to the judges, now we just have to wait. And then I remember, I think it was Kai who came up to me and said, you did great, don't, don't worry, you did great. Because I think like he could see it on my face that I was, I was kind of shocked, like I, I just couldn't say anything, like there was a lot of emotions. 
How'd you, you guys feel there? Did you feel yeah, good? good? I was feeling very good about our presentation. We thought we had a really good league. We figured, you know, we can beat Puerto Rico, Ghana, Zimbabwe. Uh, we were just very confident going into it. Um, and we then kind of eagerly awaited for, uh, for the results to come. It was kind of painful because they were going so slow, but at the same time, I'd speak for all four of us again, like we were so confident that we were gonna go on to semifinals because we had just nailed our presentation. And so then, yeah, so we were just confident going, leading up to when they called some stage. <laughs> In third place is the team from United States. Uh, and then they announced the third place team, which immediately you know you're not going on, and that was us. Um, and then we were we were disappointed by the results that were, you know. I think we did a good job of at least you know not looking too bummed out, even though on the inside all of us died a little bit because it was just it was such like we just weren't expecting it at all. So it was a really good heart check, honestly, because we had felt so confident, like yeah, like we're the United States, we nailed our presentation, like we did such a good job, and then even though we get put everything out there, it just wasn't quite enough, so we didn't make it. I just remember looking at at the team when when we found out um, the results. I looked at like I looked at them and, and they were you know just clapping for the next team and just being really proud. It was un unexpected for sure. I mean I remember one of our teammates saying, "Well, that's it. It's over. We're done. That's it." Uh, and I think uh, out of kind of shock a little bit. It's been our lives for about the last nine months, uh, every single day, and so it just it kind of hit us. It's like it's over. Like even if we had won, it'd be over. But like we didn't do as good as we thought we would, uh, so that was just like heartbreaking, honestly. Now that you're back and you're not in hyper competition mode, mm -hmm. what's it been like? Uh, it's been a lot of, I don't want to say apologizing, but getting back into focusing on the projects we have here because the reason that we've done so well competitively in the this year is because of the work that has been done the past couple of years in the projects, and so we. You kind of, when you get back from that and settle back in, you see the damage that was done of having your entire leadership team and your people that put in a lot of time in Enactus working solely for competition because then other things slip through the crack. And so getting back into regular class and projects, uh, we just kind of realized like, wow, that took up a lot of our time and we need to kind of pick up the slack that is shown from just focusing on competition. I'm incredibly proud of our Enactus organization. I think that we have phenomenal, phenomenal leaders. Um, I think that our, our club members just have this drive that I, I don't see in very many volunteer organizations and it's, it's truly remarkable. I would say the biggest takeaway I had from World Cup is realizing that the people who go to World Cup and experience something like that for the first time, like it changes your perspective on what an actus is and what it can do. And so that's very difficult because so you have this huge pendulum swing of like, wow, we can accomplish so many things and you come back to students in a university that doesn't quite see everything that you have. Years ago, we would see the teams standing on the national stage and probably say to ourselves, wow, we, we could never do that. And then one day, uh, one year, we stayed and we, we really watched those final teams and, and I had a group of students who said, we can do that. Our, our projects are as good, if not better. They just, they just tell their story a lot better we can do that and the next year we went from back in the pack to number three in the country and from that point on that was 2003 from that point on uh, we've always been somewhere nationally ranked uh, it's, it's really because they chose to believe in themselves um, but we've never won it this year we won it and so this is our first chance to go on to the global stage and there are differences and we learned that. There's a way we've been doing things for a long time, um, for 40 years, you know, we've been, uh, we've been treating Enactus, our Enactus club in a certain way and, and we have been for a long time one of the pioneers of the Enactus organization and then when we kind of, I think when we got to World Cup we realized, you know, we're not. 
right now. We're not acting as one of the pioneers of the Enactus organization because we're not taking our projects to that next level. Um, and so there is, a, there is a significant crossroads that we face. You know, we can either go this direction and impact untold amount of people's, untold uh, individuals, um, just because we have the resources to do that, or we can keep doing things the way we have and just never truly compete as well at, at World Cup. Um, so I think our goal for next year is to take as many people to World Cup, and, which is in San Jose, uh, so that they can experience similarly what we experienced, because I think that'll light a fire under a club and help us see big picture like, wow, we could create a product that is helping people and we could create a really large revenue stream to fund other projects. You know, it just, when you see those types of projects, it casts a bigger vision. You can, it just empowers you to do more. Going to World Cup, you know, we learned that our projects weren't where they needed to be, that our projects aren't to the scale that they need to be. Um, and in these next two years, um, I think that we're gonna go we're going to go back to World Cup. We're going to go back with projects that are fully formed, that have scale to the point where we can compete and we can be on the final four. I mean, London, London was the first World Cup that we were at, but it's not the last. You know, JBU and Actus is going back and we're going to win. We're going to win. It's just, it's going to take some time, but um, We'll do it. We have enabled a social entrepreneur to provide affordable clean water in his community. We have equipped a local leader to find meaningful, consistent work for individuals with disabilities. We're empowering refugees in Uganda, children in Guatemala, and food banks across the United States. We believe that effective solutions always start with a well-defined need. We believe that sustainable results are only achieved through capable and empowered people. Because of the nature of this work, we believe in doing things right over doing things fast. We are a team of students, faculty, and business leaders who see opportunity, take action, and enable progress. We are 